So this is the pelvic girdle that forms our hips. It's made out of four bones. So this is an anterior view here. And so the four bones, I'm going to tip this up so you can see this superiorly to get a look at all four bones. The first bone is the coxa, which we're going to come back to in just a moment. And there's two coxa, one on the right, one on the left. We have our sacrum. And then down here you can see our coccyx, not to be confused with the coxa. The coccyx, remember, is part of the vertebral column, and the coxa form our hip bones. There's several areas and parts and articulations that we're going to look at when we look at the pelvic girdle. Anteriorly, the first one is called the pubic symphysis. So here's the pubic symphysis, and it's the most anterior part of our pelvic girdle. It forms the, sometimes called the pubic uh, just the pubic symphysis. Cut that out, Mike. Okay, so here's our pubic symphysis forming the anterior part of our pelvic girdle. And it's the joint between the two pubic bones. And here you can see the pu uh, pubis here on the right and a pubis here on the left. So these are our pubis bones. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn our pelvic girdle laterally, so you're, now you're looking at it from the side view, and you can see this very big uh, socket, this big fossa if you like. This is called the acetabulum, and this is going to form our hip joint. So here's our acetabulum forming the hip joint, so my femur is going to articulate here, the head of the femur. Here you can see this, this passageway here. It's not really a passageway, we call it the obturator foramen. But it's usually covered over with membranes such that very few things pass between through this obturator foramen. And in fact, it really serves to lighten the weight of the, of the pelvic girdle. And you can see there's one on the other side as well. So here you have your acetabulum and your obturator foramen. And again, our, pubic, our pubis bone. And then here forming the most inferior portion of our pelvic girdle of the coxa bone is called the ischium. The ischium. So this is the ischium, and this specific part of the ischium that serves as an attachment site for muscles at the back of the leg is called the ischial tuberosity. The ischial tuberosity. And then as we continue to rotate our pelvic girdle to look at the back part of it, so again here you can see our coxa and our sacrum and our coccyx. And so we're looking at the back part, and you can see here that what's known as the ilium and I'm going to keep rotating it. So here's our ilium, and this forms what's also known as the iliac crest, which is an important, uh, important attachment site, not only for muscles of the back, but also muscles of the buttocks, of the, butt, of the back of the thigh, the iliac crest. You can see here between our ischium, so here's our ischium and our ischial tuberosity, and here's our ilium, and you can see there's this big notch, this big, uh, out of our bone of the coxa and this is called the greater sciatic notch or the greater ischiatic notch and this is where most of the nerves and the blood vessels pass out of the out of the pelvic cavity and down into the leg so like this is called the the greater sciatic notch because the sciatic nerve passes through there so people who have things like sciatica will often have something going on on the sciatic nerve that passes through this, what's known as the greater sciatic notch. And I'm just going to continue to rotate it around. Again, here you can see the acetabulum and the obturator foramen. And then again, from an from a anterior and slightly superior view here, you can see, again, the iliac. This is the ilium with the iliac crest. So the iliac crest and then the ilium.